Hi guys, it's Becky, and today I'm going to be making a full set with the Everlasting Embrace box from Potomac Beads. This is the subscription box that does not contain kits. It just contains beads. Usually you've also got some tools, some stringing materials, and additional things within that box. But I have gone ahead and pulled out what I'm using with it and got started on some of the fiddly things because I am trying out these one-step loopers this week and so I went ahead and and you know spent some time making some loops and making some links and some dangles with some of these beads before I got to y'all. I am still going to be doing one um loop or link and a dangle with you. So don't worry, we're gonna we're gonna learn how we're doing it. Um, but I, I did some of the fiddly bits, the things that take a, a lot of time um, ahead of time before we got here so that we can just make this and it'll be a nice relaxing time for you guys. Um, I just got done with work. Um, I, uh, I've been upgrading servers this week, which takes, uh, it's, you got to focus on what you're doing um, when you do those things. And so like, it is so nice to not be looking at a server screen right now to be able to make something pretty instead of that. And so let me show you the beads that I'm using from here. I wanted to use these light ballet pink heart beads. Um, these really pretty, like super light mauve pearls. I'm using the amethyst bicones, the light amethyst uh, fire polish beads, and I'm using these 10 millimeter faceted check beads. And those are the beads that I'm using for this project. Um, I do want to make some earrings using these beads, but that's going to be in a separate video. And those earrings are going to be made so that they can go with this set. But I'll also show you a different way of doing it because the way that I want to do the, um, the earrings is I want to do it with bead weaving, but not everybody does bead weaving. So I'm just going to show you um, during my little demonstration how you can just make a really quick set of earrings that will go with this set, but that uh, you don't need to do bead weaving for. <laughs> so that, that will be an option. Now things that I am adding to this is I grabbed this little heart clasp. It is a box clasp. Um, from Clasp Garden. I bought it from Potomac Beads. They had a little, oops, I just broke through that. I don't know my own strength. I was trying to break through the, the little part here, but I guess it's, there we go. Yeah, it's just a little box clasp, and I'm going to use that for the bracelet that I make. And with box clasps, you squeeze the little finger and then it's got kind of a hook that goes through there. They're really secure. They are a little bit fiddly, but I'm gonna be using that on a bracelet so that we can do that with the hearts. But it was, they had everything like that was heart shaped like on sale. So I was like, ooh, I grabbed a few other things, but I wanted to use this for this project. Oh no. All right, so I'm gonna set it over there with that. So that's one of the things that I'm adding to this that didn't come in the box was that clasp. Um, another thing is this clasp, I'm going to be using it for the necklace. And this is just a toggle clasp that I already had in my bead stash. Um, I can't even remember where I got it, but it's got the um, antique silver finish on it, which I think is gonna be a good match for the, uh, stainless steel Rolo chain that I want to also use on the necklace. And for my links, I'm using this titanium 20 gauge wire, which is a great, great color to go with stainless steel findings. And it also looks really good with antique silver findings. So it's a useful color of wire to have in your arsenal when you do that. So I'm going to be using this for all of my links. I'm also going to be using this for the ring when we get to the ring, because I am doing a full set. Um, and when I get to that ring, I'm also going to be pulling out some 24 gauge wire. Not a lot of it. You only need like maybe four or five inches. 
um, because I decided for the ring that I loved that little heart with the swirls ring that I made last week so much. I'm going to do it again. Uh, and I'm going to use these little pink hearts and I'm going to add a pearl to it. So when we get to that, you guys will see it. It'll be pretty, pretty great. Um, and then other things that I've added is we've got some head pins and some six millimeter jump rings. And I'm using the six millimeter jump rings to connect my links for my chain. And that's also what's going to connect my dangles because I've been using these head pins to make some dangles as well. So for my bracelet, I've made six links just like this. And I've also made six links just like this for my necklace. Um, now, if you wanted to make a necklace that goes all the way around and doesn't use the, the chain, you probably would need to make a lot more links. Um, I'd say maybe 10 of them to do that. Um, but I'm just going to have the front of my necklace be where all of the sparkle is and the back of it will just have the chain. And then I'm going to be attaching these dangles that I created using the head pin and some of these beads. So let me show you the, um, I don't know what that is here for, but that's okay. I just have an extra pearl for some reason. That's fine. Let me show you my tools too. For my dangles, I've been using the 1.5 millimeter one step looper. Like I said, I've been trying these out um, just because I just bought them and I want to be able to do a thorough review of this tool at the end of this week. So I am trying them out with all of my projects this week. So you might hear me discussing some of my frustrations with it or some of the things that I'm not quite sure if I'm doing it right. And that's just because it's a new tool for me. And every time you try a new tool, you might not be good at it right away. <laughs> You've got to keep working at it and, uh, and get more used to it. Things have learning curves. Um, I'm also using the 2.25 millimeter one to do my loops on my links. So I'm using that one. I've got my flush cutter for cutting my wire. I'm not doing a lot of the cutting of the wire though because the one step looper does a lot of that for you. Um, but I am opening and closing some jump rings and tightening some of my loops. So I have my chain nose pliers that I'm going to be using for those. Um, I will say also I've got my round nose pliers out because some of my loops I need to fix. And it might be me or it might be the looper. I'm not sure yet. I'm still working. I'm still trying to figure that out. It, it might be me though. It's entirely possible that it's me. Um, anyway, so we're going to go ahead and get started. I already put together the links for the, the bracelet because putting together the links for the bracelet is exactly like putting together the links for the necklace. And that way you guys don't have to watch it twice. All right. Oh, before I started too, I just wanted to do a real quick show off the kit box that I got because it wasn't here when I did my unboxing and organizing. And I just want to show it because I'm really excited about it because I love the kits that they come with. Like the kit comes with everything that you need, all of the beads, sometimes a lot of times more than what you need to complete the project, including thread. Um, I don't think this one came with needles, but that's okay because I use the wide eye needles, so I have those. So it comes with everything that you need to complete the project. It comes with a printed pattern and I'm not gonna show you um, like the whole pattern or anything. I'm just going to show just a little, just a little bit here so you can see kind of like how it actually has diagrams and things that show you how those beads are supposed to go and where the thread is supposed to go. They're really well written patterns. I find them very easy to follow, um, but sometimes uh, your learning style might be different than reading things or seeing diagrams and you may need to watch somebody do something so they always 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 have a um, video tutorial on their youtube that you can access for free to make all of these but yeah it comes with all of the findings it comes with thread and all of these things and i'm probably going to when i make these earrings i'm going to use some of these wire guardians that they put in our other box and I'm going to turn them into dangle earrings instead of posts 
because I don't wear post earrings very much at all and I prefer dangly earrings but yeah so it gives you lots to do things with including the thread and that's that's the kit box and I had subscribed for a while last week or last year and I wasn't able to continue it and then I just got everything worked out it's within the budget again and I got resubscribed to it and the way I did it actually is I used some of my tax return and I paid for a year up front so that I don't have to worry about like what my budget is like later this year I know this is always gonna come and um, I'm happy to pay for it up front because I've had so much experience with the Potomac Beads kits I know that even if that's not a project that I particularly am going to enjoy um, I might use the pattern for something else or I might reconfigure it um, or I might use the beads and the findings that came in it to make something else altogether with it so I'm I know I know I trust trust their kits so I just wanted to show that off to you before we get started all right changing gears now let's go back to my project so let's pull out these guys and I will show you how I made my dangles. So for my dangles, I started with a head pin. And then I put on these teeny tiny bicones. I think these are like two millimeter bicones that we got in the box. And then the pearl, it's a six millimeter pearl. And they look really pretty next to these purple bicones. And then the pink heart next. And then the three millimeter fire polish bead right on top of that. So you've got a little bit of sparkle on top of your shiny and pearly guys. All right, now to do these loops with the one step looper, I'm gonna put it all the way through here, but I don't want this bead to go anywhere past the edge of this guy here, because if you do that, that is a really great way to break your beads because it breaks, whoop, it breaks the wire and it bends it around this middle part here. And this is the part that I have been having the most frustration with is that it doesn't close it up all the way when you do it. And I had some tips, some folks were telling me that when you do it, you have to bend the wire back while it's still in there. And I've tried so many different ways to get that to work. And it just isn't for me, not with this 1.5 millimeter one. Um, it, it is a little bit different with the 2.25 millimeter one. And so that's why I've got my other tools here to close up and fix those loops so that they, they work better. So yeah, there you go. I've got my, I've got my loops over here. Oh, and this is, this is what I was going to show you is with these dangles, you can just make an extra one of these dangles and attach it to an ear wire and you'll have a little earring that goes with everything else. So that's, you know, an option if you don't want to do the bead woven component that I'm going to show in a separate video. That would make a really good earring. It's nice, simple, and it makes a cohesive set. All right, so the actual links that I'm using for these are pearl 10 millimeter fasted bead and pearl on the wire and the uh, the one step loopers they make simple loops they don't make wire wrapped loops for those you would need to use your other tools all right but here we go um they kind of slip out of my hands when i'm doing them i don't i don't know how to hold them right but then you put that in there and see it bends it all the way around to the end. I don't know if you guys can see it. And this is the part I think that people were saying if you bend it or tip up the wire, it'll close up that loop because that is a much better loop. You can see that all the way closed, all the way around, and it's centered on the wire. And then if I push these guys up, and then cut the wire here using my flush cutters. But 
this part I wasn't able to get any really good loops. It's the second loop, like the first loop I can get a perfect loop almost every single time. The second loop I've been having trouble with, and I think it's because there's this bead kind of in the way when I go to put it in there. There we go. Nope. So it curves it around. See that bead is in the way and folks were saying to tip it, but I can't move this. I can't tip it either way, up, down, or anything because of that bead being in the way. So I have to remove it first before I can do anything with it. And it did center my loop very nicely, but my loop is open a little bit, but that's okay because I want to be able to squish it with my pliers in order to work harden the wire and make sure that those loops are going to stay loopy. So pulling it out in order to do that is not a big deal and it gives me a chance to go ahead and fix that second loop. So that's how I've been making these links for this project. Just real quick, I wanted to show you guys how I make my loops when I'm not using the one-step looper. Just in case you do not have that tool and you want to know how to make a simple loop. I always start at the end with my round nose pliers and then you bring the loop down to where it meets the wire. You see it looks like a nine or a P or a Q or maybe an upside down B. And you put it, the loop back through here and then just tap the back of this wire with the other side of your pliers and then twist it back in order to readjust the loop and center it. And that's how I make my simple loops. And the second loop is always a little bit more fun than that. All right, so let's open and close some jump rings in order to attach these links together. Because like I said, I am attaching them with these jump rings. And the bracelet was attached the exact same way. I'm just going to use these to hold open that side of the jump ring. And then I twist the jump ring in order to open it. So it's offset, offset like that. You don't want to spread it open, you just want to twist it open. And then I can hold this side firm while I twist it closed again. And the round pliers are not the best ones for that, so I'm just going to swap over to ones that aren't as round, that are flatter, and will hold this better. Because as you saw, <laughs> they they do have a tendency to slip out of the round ones, so opening and closing our oh, guys. But yeah, if you are new to my channel, this month for February, I'm doing a challenge where I make a full set of jewelry with every bead box that I get or every bead bundle that I get. Um, and so it's, there's been a whole thing. <laughs> and this would be set number 10 that I've, been, I've made so far this month. Um, which, you know, I'm not doing too bad with it, but I still have a whole lot more to do. Um, I'm not sweating it too much. If I don't get to them all, I don't get to them all. But I did want to make some of them with you guys so that you guys can see what I'm making. Um, and some of them I'll be making off screen because I'll be following tutorials from other people. But I will include those with my wrap ups. I'm doing weekly wrap ups at on Sundays, so if you don't want to watch all of my videos, you can just see what I made. I do a little try on then too. And they're pretty short, my wrap up videos. 
All right, so now I've got these guys all connected. Now I'm going to take my dangles and since these are simple loops, I can swing them open and closed in order to attach them to these jump rings or I could swing the jump ring open. Or when I was attaching this, I could have done link, dangle, link, um, and just done it that way all at once. There are different ways of, of getting to the same result when you do these things. All right, now I wanna make sure when I do that, that my dangle is gonna be on the same side for each of these. So you can see with this one, turn that down this way, that when it's hanging, it's going to hang down from the bottom of there. So I'm going to want to attach the next one here on this side of this. So it's going to be useful for me to pick it up and make sure that they're not twisted funny when I am doing these. So let's get that exactly that way. This is probably the best reason to go ahead and do it after you've got these connected is so that these will dangle the same direction for all of these. So I'm going to want to attach to this side, not to that side of that loop. That's just a little extra, paying a little extra attention to what you're doing. Oop. My, uh, my small bead is trying to travel off of my loop here while I'm trying to get the loop into the jump ring. Oof. Come on, buddy. There you go. Can close that up. Make sure that these guys are all hanging the right way. Okay. Oop. All right, so that's flipping up on me. All right, there we go, there we go, there we go. There, there will be dangles dangling from these guys. And now I made five dangles for the necklace and I made six for the bracelet because one of these is going to be attached to the clasp. I like having a dangle that I can hold on to with my finger like this when I'm doing up a clasp. It just makes it so much easier for me. I will show you that when we get there. We aren't there yet. Alright. So now I'm going to find the center of this length of chain. I cut this length of chain to the length that I wanted before we got started. But I wanted to show you my little trick that I like to use to find out the middle of a chain. I just take one end of my chain and put it on 
a piece of wire or this ear wire was handy so I can just put it on there and then put the other end of the chain on there just let it dangle and that way I can find the exact center of the chain and it looks like this link right here is the middle so I'm gonna cut that link Oof. this is just an older pair of flush cutters that I have that I don't really care about and they work great for cutting this chain this chain is not super hard to cut like some stainless steel or some stainless steel chain that you probably will want to use a uh, memory wire cutter for, but that that's not too bad. It can it can take it. And then we're gonna just use jump rings again to attach each end of the chain to the end of this part of the necklace, the front part of the necklace. It's a really easy way to get a lot of mileage out of these beads and make a statement to use links to use dangles and then to finish it off with some chain to keep it fairly simple looking but still have something impactful to look at Because these large beads are pretty large they they could they take center stage just having a few of them on the necklace and spacing them out kind of makes them prettier and helps them highlight the other beads that are on there so I like I like that I like it a lot all right I'm gonna put my toggle clasps on here and we're going to call this part of our set done the necklace part just using the uh the jump rings again to attach the toggle i need to open this wider because that is a wide piece of wire And then we'll get this on here. I'm gonna actually, I think, use two jump rings for this because I like there to be a little more uh, flexible. I mean, it's chained, so it's gonna be pretty easy to, to rotate around. But I still, I like having two jump rings for the, uh, the toggle end of a toggle clasp. So let me grab the second one here. need smaller jump rings than the six millimeter. I will fix that later. I'm going to call that done for now. So we've got these guys and they are sparkly and because it's such a light color it might be getting lost with this dark background but if I move it over here onto the dark background you can see it's so much easier. with all of those dangles. So I love that. Set that aside and let's work on bracelet now. I'm gonna be doing basically the same thing. I'm going to be attaching each of these dangles to one of these jump rings between the links. I know you're asking yourself, Becky, why didn't you do this before we got there? And that's because 
I was busy upgrading servers, guys. I did a lot of my prep work on my lunch break, and then I came back to you when I was done with work. Because I like having a roof over my head and food in the cupboard. These are going to be dangles, and so it's going to look a little bit like a charm bracelet when you are wearing it. Why is that so hard to get on here? I don't know. Two more, and then we can attach our clasp. Yeah, I, um, I have ideas for a bead woven pair of uh, earrings using some of the multi-hole beads and all of those. And so I'm going to be having that in a totally separate video. So if you're into doing bead weaving or you want to learn it from me, we can do that together. And if you don't really want to watch that, you do not have to. I'm not going to make you. Why is this one? I think this one's on the wrong side, but I can fix that in a little bit after I get this last one on here. Yes, perfect. Yep, this is the one that is wonky. And it's the first one that I did too. Great. So basically I did all of the other ones wrong. <laughs> but I'm gonna change this one because, um, you know, you wanna make the easiest changes when you're changing things up. You don't want to make it harder for yourself. I'm really bad at looping this on here for some reason. It's not computer screens, guys. I know you guys are watching me. Some of you watch me on TV, but some of you watch me on computer screens or phone screens or tablets. But, you know, I need to look at things that are not that. Okay, so this is the bracelet. Love it so far already. It looks great. And now I'm going to be doing my clasp. And because 
the fiddly part is the one that I'm going to need to be using my hand for. It is not the part that I'm going to attach the charm next to. I'm going to use the, where's my jump rings? There they are. Two of those. I'm going to have it next to the part that needs to stay still so that the charm can help hold that still. So I'm going to attach this all on its own here to the other end. setting myself up for success. <laughs> really hope it works. <laughs> right. Right Let's attach the clasp to the end of this with a jump ring. And then, whoop, I'm going to attach the jump ring with the dangle to that jump ring. So there's my jump ring, there's my dangle. Why am I doing it this way? I don't know. All right, so let's find out if it's going to work for me. Yes. Clasp. Haha. <laughs> and now. And now I've got some dangly jangly on my bracelet. My little heart clasp. All right. Let's get this guy out of here. Ooh, here we go. There's where that, that charm is coming handy again. Ah, good job, Becky. That was good thinking. That's why I love having a dangle on my bracelets. Why, why are you the way you are? This jump ring is twisted apart a little bit. So I'm just gonna close it better. There we go. All right. this up, set that aside, yay! All right, now let's make a ring. All right, I'm just gonna scooch in just a little bit while we do this ring, and again, I'm using the 20 gauge titanium wire and then some 24 gauge, and it's just silver, and that's fine wire and I do not need very much of this so I'm just going to cut it off now so it's ready to go. Actually let me scooch out so you can see. All right. So 24 gauge and 20 gauge and like I said I really really liked that one ring that I made recently. It's my favorite one from last week with some red hearts and some swirls. And so I'm going to do the same thing 
with pink hearts and some swirls and we're gonna add a bead to it so for that I did actually use a significant amount about maybe 15 16 inches of wire I'm just straightening this out and warming it up with my fingers this wire is dead soft wire so it is very easy to manipulate does not take very much to straighten that out and for tools for the ring I am going to be using a ring mandrel and like I've said in some of my other videos if you don't have a ring mandrel look around for something that a ring that you know fits on your finger will also fit onto like I've got this one tube of lipstick it's an urban decay lipstick tube and it is the perfect size to fit my finger. Um, this might be too big for your fingers. You may not have peasant fingers like I do. So look around and find a tube that works for it. I will give you a word of warning that if you do use something that is not a purpose-built mandrel, do not hammer on it because you would shatter the plastic or the glass or something else that you're using it on. Um, maybe if it's wood, that would be okay because this is wood. Um, but if you need to hammer your work, just get a mandrel. It'll be fine. All right, so basically what I'm gonna do with this, is I'm gonna bend this wire around at the spot where I want my ring to be. I'm gonna find a place right here in the middle where the wire meets. And because this is gonna spring back after I take it off of here, I'm going to just grab a marker and I'm going to just mark right here a line that's on both of my wires so that when I take it off of the mandrel, I'm just got to put a lid back on my pen, those two lines will line up when I push them back together. And I'm just using a little bit of pressure to push these lines back together like this. Or I could even hold it on the side to hold these together, these lines. If they're right next to each other, then I know it's the right size. And I can grab my 24 gauge wire. I'm just pinching this in my finger over here on the side. I'm just going to go through this. I'm just going to do like four or five wraps, probably five. Around this spot, making sure that those stay together. going to cut this part off, this awkward bit, after I get the tighter wraps around here. So that's one, two. don't want I do not want this to twist I want these to stay in the right order cut that a little bit so that I don't have to do as much bending of the wire to get it around. Two, three. It doesn't need to be pretty. It's going to be hidden. I'm going to be putting that pearl over it. Right, 
this. And see how I said I was going to cut off this extra bit here? That's what I'm doing right here. And I'm going to cut off this extra bit here. And see how it's gotten a little bit misshapen? I'm going to pop it back on the ring mandrel real quick. Scooch down. Right here. And I'm moving these wires away from the center of it because I am going to grab my hammer. Like I said, if you are using something that is not purpose-built for being a ring mandrel, do not use a hammer. But this hammer will help work harden this band. in the shape that I want it to be. All right, I think that's gonna be enough of that for now. I can always go back and do a little more. All right, so now I'm going to slide my hearts on here. Scooch it right right up there. I've got my heart here. I'm just going to bend this this way to keep that heart where I want it to be. Oh boy, and that ring is just going everywhere. But that's okay because when we get our a second heart on here, It will help hold it where I want it to be. Oop, that second heart is a little bit of a tight fit. So I'm gonna swap out for a different bead because if there's any sort of tight fitness on your wire, you wanna not use that bead on it because forcing it will break your bead. We already know it'll fit on the 20 gauge wire, most of them, because the other one fits. But that one got a little bit stuck. There was also a little bit of a bump there on the edge of the wire that I moved. I removed so that we could make sure we didn't have any bumps in the way. And I'm just gonna make sure that that size is still good. Yep, size is still good, so I'm going to bend the wire towards me at the end of this ring. So that is holding those two hearts sort of in place. Let's do our swirls, and then after our swirls are done, we'll attach our pearl. You know, I forgot to say is that we're attaching our pearl with more of that 20, uh, 24 gauge wire. So we'll use we'll use that more of that in just a little bit. Boom, 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 boom. Let's make a swirl, and I think I need let's see one finger's length of of wire for swirl. Just my forefinger. And my four fingers length. I like using like fingers to measure things because I consistently always have them with me. Um, they are always there. <laughs> always there. All right, so for a swirl, now you cannot do this with a one-step looper. 
Um, I mean, I don't want to say I've tried because I haven't. Um, I just can't figure out how. But you can use your round nose pliers for this. You start with a teeny tiny loop on the end and then you just twist it around and when it starts twisting on itself you switch to either some flat nose pliers like these or your chain nose pliers something flat that you can grip the oh, I was off screen I'm sorry about that <laughs> I'll show you on the next one so you just want to go go slow while you're twisting you can even when you have really soft wire like this you can start twisting with your fingers and I want there to be a little bit of space between this tight coil and these coils right up next to my hearts so I am going ahead and using my fingers for that. I'm just going to pop this coil underneath my heart. That needs to be a little bit rounder and not so got one side. Actually, no, I want the coil above my heart. Like this. Well, you can see the heart. Maybe my coil was too big. I don't know. Let's do our second coil. All right, so I was off the screen a little bit for that one. So let's, let's do this right here where you guys can see. Start at the tippy tippy end of your round nose pliers and you twist this around until you get to the point where if you were to squeeze this it would squeeze both of these wires and that's when you move to something that's flatter like these flat nose pliers or chain nose pliers something that you can hold that coil with while you use your finger to move the wire around the coil. So like I'm not actually moving the coil, I'm just holding it still while my finger moves the wire around it. And you go just a little bit at a time. And like everything else, the more you do of this, the better practice you're going to get. And the better you will be eventually. All right, so I've got my hearts and I've got my coils. And now I want to add a pearl. I think I want the pearl to sit between both of these coils. So let me grab some more. This 24 gauge wire. Again, you do not need very much of it. It's about maybe three inches of it. And I'm just going to do a couple quick wraps here where it's open and easier to wrap around. Just with one end of this wire. One. Two. 
couple of wraps on that side anchoring it. I'm going to scooch this down around my coil to this side. So it's I wrapped over here and then I scooched it. I'm going to leave this open until I'm done so that I can clip it off when I'm done, but I'm leaving it there for now. I'm going to pop my pearl on this end. There. And I'm going to do a couple wraps around this part of the coil. By going into that little gap. And pull on it. And into that gap right there. Bring it around, pull it through, and I'm just going to do one more. nice and tight on that side before I clip it I'm just gonna move this over here where that's at I'm gonna give this a little bit of a finesse push that coil closer with this wire and give this a nice tightening I don't mind about marks in this part of the wire because I'm cutting that part off. There you go. You've got your pearl connected on either end. Let's cut off these wires because boy, do they look crappy. I've got hearts and pearls and swirls. I think this is probably the most complicated part of this entire project was the hearts and pearls and swirls. I'm just gonna press those down around here so that they fit a little bit better on this ring that I made. All right, so I've got a ring. I have A necklace I have a bracelet and if I do another let me, let me grab a head pin real quick and I'll just do another dangle real quick for an earring I am going to do a different earring one that's bead woven that will go with these um, in a separate video again, It'll be a separate video. So look out for that. But you can make some earrings by basically taking one of these drops and attaching it to an ear wire. And again, the drop is one of these two millimeter bicones, the pearl, Heart and one of these three millimeter fire polish beads. And then you do a little loop up at the top. And I'm just going to use this instead of trying to figure out where my one step looper is to do this kind of a loop. I'll bend it over right next to where the bead is. I usually will measure from the edge of that bead to where my um, 
my fingernail starts against the side of my finger there. It's usually a decent amount of space for a, um, a simple loop. And then I'll take my round nose pliers and I'll twist the loop up and over. And that makes a simple loop. And then you can attach it to an ear wire. And you can have yourself an earring to go with that. So that is a full set. Um, if I had a second earring, and I am going to have some other earrings that I make that will go with this as well. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope that you had a nice relaxing evening and that you're getting a chance to do some beading. I'll talk to you later. Bye.